Hi everyone, I recently got a few questions in the comments of my earlier videos that I thought would be worth answering in a video of their own. Now, some of the comments were in regards to previous projects that I've worked on, like my bismuth magnetic levitator here. And another one, can an arc lighter be used to make a mini Jacob's Ladder? I thought that was a very interesting question. So this is what I came up with. If you've never seen a Jacob's Ladder before, it's basically two metal wires that stick up on an angle. So the closest space in between them is toward the bottom of the wires, and as they go up, they get further and further apart. Now when you charge these two wires with high voltage electricity, an arc wants to jump between them. But that arc will start where the wires are closest together, which is toward the bottom. Now in a conventional Jacob's Ladder, the electricity then heats the air, which causes convection. The heated air is more conductive to electricity, so as it rises, the spark rises with it. Now in this miniature Jacob's Ladder that I've created, the arc lighter doesn't seem to produce quite enough heat or I should say maybe the arc isn't quite a large enough size to produce the convection that would cause the arc to rise naturally. Now, what I've done to make this actually functional is to add a length of tubing to blow air towards the arc. Now, by blowing air through this tube, which Mose seems to be super interested in, the arc itself may be too small to cause the air to rise, but by blowing through the tube, we can definitely get enough motion to make it happen. There is another difference between this design and a regular Jacob's Ladder, and that's that the arc lighter runs on pulsed DC current. The current rises and falls several times a second. A regular Jacob's Ladder runs on true DC, or pure DC, meaning that the DC current stays at the same voltage. That helps with the convection as well. It's another reason why this arc lighter design requires the forced airflow. The second question that I received is, could my bismuth levitator here be used to make a frictionless motor? Because the magnet that is levitating in the center is actually not making contact with anything except for the air around it. Already, that means that it's not a completely frictionless motor because of the air that is surrounding the magnet, but suppose it were in a vacuum, would it be completely frictionless? That's actually getting a little too far into the question already. The first question should be, can this be used to make a motor at all? So that's the first thing that I'm gonna try. I will try wrapping a coil of wire around our levitating magnet and see if we can drive it to spin using electricity. Okay, so I have a coil of wire wrapped around the levitating magnet in the center of the device here, as you can see. And on the other end of this coil, I'm about to connect a battery. So let's see what happens here. Okay, the magnet pulled out. When I let go, it began spinning. The battery is no longer connected at this point. I'll connect it again, and it's stuck. Connecting and disconnecting right now. And it got itself stuck, okay. Shake that and it became free again. See, it's interesting because when I connect the battery, it pulls the magnet to the side, and when I disconnect, it's when it seem, is when it seems to start spinning. Now, I want to say that it only spins because when it gets pulled off of the coil of wire, uh, the magnet that is on the top of this levitator is pulling it back into alignment with enough force to start it spinning like that, but the spinning seems more rapid than what I would expect from that small amount of force. So perhaps when I disconnect the battery, maybe there's a small amount of charge left in the coil that takes a moment to dissipate. And that is enough to get the magnet spinning. When I, when I connect the magnet in the moment, it's generating a little bit too strong of a magnetic field and it's not enough in balance to keep the magnet centered. So that's why it gets pulled to the side. 
but I'm not sure why it starts rotating so fast when the coil is disconnected. I was just curious to try this uh, when I first read the comment suggesting it. Now look at the magnet now, it's spinning extremely quickly after that last disconnection. Just connect it and reconnect it a few more times. If any of you know why the magnet spins up to speed when the battery has been disconnected like it's doing now, let me know in the comments. I'd be really interested to hear uh, a reason for that. In any case, the original question was, can this levitator produce a frictionless motor? And the answer to that is sort of. Uh, you can obviously see that I'm able to uh, I'm able to achieve a certain level of rotation by connecting and disconnecting the battery. However, I cannot keep the magnet centered for the reason that it has no spindles to hold it in place. Without bearings of some kind to hold the magnet centered, it would be all but impossible to have a coil that generates a magnetic field cleanly enough to leave the magnet in the center as it spins up to speed. In any case, pretty interesting experiment. I, I want to try one more thing, and that is to put the coil sideways. So let me pull the coil out without the magnet coming out of place with it. There we go. And then we're going to turn the coil up on its side. Okay. Now let's see what happens if I apply charge like this. And there it goes. The magnet pulled straight out from in between the plates. I'm going to put this back in. And once again, the magnet has pulled out of place. I suppose that is to be expected, seeing as how the coil is wanting to pull the magnet into its center. Let me see if I leave the charge on instead of disconnecting it. Okay, so you can see the magnet pulled to the center of the coil and stayed there when I left the charge on. All right, well, that was interesting. Put the magnet back in place. And let's let it rotate freely. So in any case, this was a bit of a shorter video this week. I was working on a larger project, but it turned out I had to scrap it and wait for new parts to arrive from China, which could take a while. So in the meantime, I have started on a new larger project. I wanted to get this one in to get you something this week. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. All right, you want to play now? I know. I've made you sit through this whole thing. No, you can't touch that. You'll get shocked. <laughs> or that. You weirdo. What's your problem? Hmm? All right, up there. Let's go.